Greetings, YouTube. Welcome to the Daddy Dog Blog. I'm going to share a Bigfoot story with you today. I'm going to turn it over to my friend, Bigfoot Michigan Rob. Before I get started, thanks to everybody that watches these videos. I hope you enjoy them as much as I enjoy putting them out. Beyond bmrgmail.com, if you want me to read your encounter on my YouTube channel, Bigfoot Michigan Rob. I do have to make a quick comment. I got a, a message the other day from somebody who said, Hey, Rob, sometimes you put out really scary encounter stories and sometimes not so much. Why do you do that? I want everybody to know when you send an encounter story, it's going to get airtime. It's going to be shown on my channel if you want me to. It doesn't matter if it's boring. It doesn't matter if it's scary because it's all about the data. A lot of people want to get this relief and off your chest. So that's why I do this to help you guys out. And yeah, sure, I want views. Who doesn't? But I'm not going to be prejudiced. I'm not going to judge one story over the next. With that being said, this uh, encounter story here, well, it's pretty creepy. It's, it's kind of scary when I read it, and I hope you enjoy it. It was a sunny day on this autumn afternoon at Knob State Forest in Kentucky. My son and I had just finished setting up our campsite, and now it was time for a hike down the trail approximately 20 yards from camp. At this time, my son was 16 years old, and he was disappointed that his mother and I had decided to divorce. We needed this time to talk. At roughly 20 minutes into the hike, my son said, Dad, how come this tree is upside down? I was thinking to myself, what does he mean by this? After questioning him, he pointed to a tree that literally was upside down. The tree seemed to be pulled from the ground with the bulbous roots, which were at least 12 feet in length, were sprung towards the sky. And what was supposed to be the treetop was firmly jammed into the ground. I had no explanation, as I had never seen this in all my years hunting and camping out in the woods. This was not an act of Mother Nature, and it looked as though somebody or something had done this. There was no sign of heavy excavation equipment surrounding the area, and in fact, the tree seemed to be fresh, as if this was done very recently. Upon walking back to camp, this had eerily been implanted into my mind. What in the world could have done this, I pondered. Nighttime had fallen, and my son and I had a blazing campfire roaring, and I had gotten into a deep discussion about why Mom and Dad had decided to part ways. Then, in an instance, a large tree branch, at least seven foot long, with, a, excuse me, with an assortment of connected appendages, came sprawling from the tree line, slamming hard into our well-lit fire. Embers of fire splashed about the campsite. Thankfully, the fire did not spread. The glow of the fire and embers was red hot and smoldering as my son and I had haphazardly stomped on the coals in an attempt to extinguish them. Then it seemed close. A large grunt emanated from the tree line. It reminded me of a wild hog or boar. However, the depth of the vocalization was not that of either. Not an animal. The fire and the embers were in a blaze. This helped to cast a shadow from the tree line. At this tree line, a shadowy figure. It seemed to be as tall as the trees, ominously stood in the foreground. I thought aloud, what a creepy shadow. Then, an then in an instant, I recognized this was no shadow. Two yellow saucer-shaped eyes appeared roughly 10 feet from the ground. I thought I was seeing things until the eyes. Those eyes, they blinked, not once, but twice. Then in an instant, from those eyes, a four-foot by three-foot tree stump came hurling from the, that direction, landing several feet from camp. It caused no harm, but it had my son in tears, and I, well, felt fear for my son and myself. When I looked back into the tree line, for those eyes, they were gone. It was bad enough that I had to tell my son about mom and dad, but this night did not help us out one bit. And that 
Yes, signed J.R. And I hope you enjoyed that. You know, scary things, you guys. Seeing those embers glowing, the background with the shadowy figure, the eyes, who knows what it was. We can only speculate on certain things out in the woods. Be safe when you're out there. Subscribe to Bigfoot Michigan Rob. Leave a comment. Give me your thoughts, what you think. Until next time, Bigfoot Michigan Rob, BMR, he's out. You can see me Thursdays, noon central with text with our uh, Bigfoot Michigan Rob show. And this Thursday coming up, we have Steve Stockton from the Missing 411. He's going to be on the show. It's going to be a great. Thank you, Bigfoot Michigan Rob, for that really cool, scary tale. My cool dog thanks you for starring on her blog. Till next time, blog every dudes.